This time on the show, hacking into the latest Android 4.2 Jelly Bean with a USB rubber ducky and why remote wipe may not save you. Then which OS is best for everyday pen testing? I check out Backbox, plus DD Rescue to the rescue. All that and more this time on Hack 5. This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoToAssist. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. Welcome to December. Oh, it is December, I guess so. Huh? Yeah, yeah, this year went by super fast. Hey, hey, no, don't be one of those people that are making Where's this... our tree? Oh, yeah, I guess we, we need to set up our up. Christmas tree. There you go. We'll get that on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, get this. This was fun. What? Yeah, uh, so I lost my passport, except I'm holding it right now. And okay. so I call the uh, passport authority and report that I lost it. And then, as you should do. And then as soon as I get off the phone, I reach in my back pocket, and guess what's in my back pocket? Oh. So now I have so to. So did get... you call them back? No, they they made me twice confirm that like I understand that by blah blah blahing the blah blah, oh, and if I find I it, see. it's no good. And so I guess I should burn this. I I don't know. What do I do? I guess burning your passport you your sounds scrapbook. like a very anti-American thing to do. Put it in your scrapbook. No, you don't. Know you what? have like little stamps in there? Can't you get in a lot of trouble if you have two IDs? Psh, whatever. I yeah. have like six IDs because well, they're all in my scrapbook. Well, it's awesome because I also <laughs> found my driver's license, so I'm all like, Woo! "Yay!" Yeah, I'm Is like a real citizen Is this one that's like cut now. in half and no, your no, no, photos no, 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 missing no, no. from it's it? It's not the Virginia one. Okay, that's yeah. good. <laughs> but I, I just thought Darren that I loses would share things that. a lot. The only reason I'm sharing this is because I'm bummed out about the fact that I now have to uh, to get a new passport and it's, it's going to be gonna the one with the RFID. And it's going to be like six months for you to actually receive that's it. Not true. Yeah, no, it like, takes no, that long. No, it's like it's six to ten weeks. No, it's not. It's so, like six months. Really? Yeah. No, it's like. Well, bucks after Sandy, it was six months. No. Did well, Sandy they need were a passport? They were saying that it's going to be six months. Yeah, my friend, my friend Lindsay has to get a passport. Oh. And they're telling her that it's delayed because of Hurricane Sandy. Okay, so if you know of ways that I can get into Canada without a passport, feedback at hack5.org. We got a fantastic show, guys, for you this week. Uh, you're getting into fun distros of Linux for yes, the everyday I am. pen testing. Yay! I love checking out Linux, Linux distros, so I'm checking out Backbox this and week. And they love checking you out, too. I'm yeah, getting those into the USB rubber okay. ducky hacking of Android phones because it's it turns okay. out you can just go at this all day long. I'm at, ooh, we're, we're at two. I love you we're gonna too. going to know here in just a moment. Because I just recorded the segment, and now we're recording out of order, and I want to see how high it is. I'm so excited. Ah, 850 attempts. Oh, my God. Android. Yeah, it'll be fun. Okay, so uh, <laughs> with all of that said, I guess I'll just throw to myself where we're going to talk about brute forcing androids. <laughs> so if you guys remember, last week we were talking about the fun stuff that we're developing with the USB rubber ducky, and I've been having a ton of fun in Android because, just like any other computer, they love human input. And what is a USB rubber ducky? Well, it's a human interface device that mimics human input as a keyboard, and through it we can do some really fun stuff. I've used it in the past to, say, brute force the BIOS password on an old machine where you happen to have forgot the BIOS password. And somebody in the comments on YouTube had uh, mentioned, hey, why don't you try brute forcing Android? To which myself, as well as many other people, automatically go like, dude, are you kidding? They're gonna like, after five tries, you have to wait like 10 minutes, and then after like 100 tries or 50 tries or whatever it may be, it's just going to format the device and it's going to be no fun, and then you'll have sad pants on and nobody wants to wear sad pants. But it turns out that is totally not the case. And I was like totally freaked out when I came in to try to put together a segment for you guys that's basically the idea of like why online brute forcing typically doesn't work, except for today when it does. Which is pretty cool because you know we typically think about like security as you know just a measure of like security and convenience, especially when it comes to mobile. Um, you know nobody wants to type in like a big ass password. Like I've got like an 80 character Gmail password, and let me tell you, it's no fun to have to type or swipe. In fact, you can't swipe it. There's too many little things to go into. So mitigating you know the the convenience and security trade-off there, a lot of people go with like a four-digit passcode, and so many times it's been said. Oh, well, just you know, use a uh, pin code on your Android device because that swipe to unlock is no good. As Cause has pointed out here, uh, Kyle Osborne on this show, Cause.io, with his P2P ADB software, go back into the, the Hack 5 archive and find yourself a, a copy of that episode. 
to get all learned up on how you can bypass the swipe to unlock screen. Or, you know, looking at the smudges, you can say like, oh, it looks like they go up and then down and then over and it's like a Tetris block, but I'm, why am I using this force? And so the idea is like, use a pin code, that'll save you, it's good enough security because nobody wants to like type in a really long password. Uh, and the, the idea has always been also that if you lose your phone, you've got time, you'll, you'll be okay because you can remote wipe that phone. And, you know, th that these are all very good um, ideas, but I think, that, uh, I think that a lot more could be done to save you. So I've actually put together a really fun scenario using uh, a stock out-of-the-box Android 4.2.1, like the latest version as is on a uh, Galaxy Nexus. And I figured that this would be a great example of uh, showing off some fun stuff we can do in Bash, some fun stuff we can do with the Ducky script, and uh, some, you know, a great example of an online brute force attack and some of the caveats involved there. So first of all, what we're going to need to do is put together a Ducky script to do our brute force attack. And I don't want to rewrite the firmware, and I don't want to <laughs> spend an hour writing a uh, text file, but this is the perfect time to be using things like brace expansion. So why don't we just go ahead and have our Ducky script written out in Bash? And I'm assuming you're already familiar with Ducky script. If you're not, it looks like this. We could do uh, nano Ducky script dot txt. Yeah, yeah. And then it would be like script hello world. And then we'd hit enter. And then we could like hit alt and then F4. And then that would do exactly what you would expect it to do. So what if we want a ducky script text file that includes every number from 0000 to 9999. Well, if uh, you've been watching, uh, what is it called, Hack Tip with Shannon on the kind of Linux bashy stuff, you'll remember that Brace Expansion is a great way to do that. So let's go ahead and create a file here, or I'll give you an example. I'm going to echo, um, let's see, in this case, squiggly bracket 0000 dot dot and then 0010. And you can see it just prints out 10 of those. And so that's pretty cool. And so expanding on this, I can say, go to 9999. And what we'll do with this is I'm going to pass this to xargs, which is a really cool tool for manipulating stuff. And we're going to say we want one column of these. And we're going to prefix it with echo string. And so if I do that, I now have string. And it might take a while, but you can see there it's going all the way to uh, 9999. So let's continue with this. At this point, what I'm going to want to do is uh, add a couple of things because if I start brute forcing uh, on my Android device, every five attempts, it's going to tell me to wait. So check this out. I'll uh, show you here with my Galaxy Note, and I'll just say one, two, three, four. Nope. One, two, three, five. Nope. Three, six. Three, seven. One, two, three, eight. Oh, hey, check that out. I've typed my password incorrectly five times. I now need to wait 30 seconds. And I can hit OK here, but it's still counting at 21, 20, 19. And um, so what I want to do here is put in something that will allow me to later go ahead and change that to a sort of delay. And so I'll just use this as a uh, opportunity to uh, every five put the word wait. And we'll come back and change that later. So if I say uh, said, and then do zero uh, tilde five, and then s slash dollar slash, and I'm going to do a backslash n, which will do a carriage return here, and I'll type the word wait slash g, and then if I print this, in fact, let me change this from 9999 to like uh, 100, so you can see there. There we go. We can see every fifth line we've inserted the word wait, which is awesome, except uh, I also need to put a delay in here because if I type this quickly, it's going to freak out my Android phone and I'll really start fuzzing it and I had a lot of fun with them rebooting a lot. So I'm going to also add in here another said and that's going to be a 0 tilde 1, so it's every other and then it will be s slash dollar slash and then a backslash n for a carriage return delay 1000. So that delay is 1000 cycles or milliseconds. And then backslash n. And I'm going to do enter, backslash n, enter. 
and then slash g for global, so it does it everywhere, and close my tick, or my quote. So now, every other command has delay and two enters. So that means on the Android keyboard, it's going to be waiting, um, you know, one second, and then it's going to jam enter twice. And the reason that I want to do that is because, you know, I've just typed in a character, and I also want to make sure that I'm keeping that screen on. Uh, it's going to be very important when we start getting to the points where we're waiting for 30 seconds and whatnot. So with all of that, I should go ahead and actually fix that wait, because that wait isn't actually a ducky script command. That's just a placeholder for me to later come in and change that with something that will wait 30 seconds. So in this case, what I'm going to do is pipe this again. I know I'm doing a lot of piping, and there's probably a better way to do this, but I know said, and this works for me. Uh, and I'm going to say s slash wait. So anytime I see wait, I want to change that to delay 5,000, and then an carriage return or an enter by doing backslash n. The word enter, which tells the ducky to press the enter key on the Android. Delay, another 5,000. And then a backslash n, and then enter, and then backslash n, and then delay 5,000 one more time. And then backslash n, enter, and then finally, what is that? Is that three? Okay, we'll do it once more to be sure, because I want to make sure that uh, we have uh, ample time here. All right, that looks good. Let's see, I have a backslash n after all of my commands. And that should do it. And slash g for global. And end my quote there. And now, you can see I have all of these. Every five, instead of saying wait, it will say delay 5,000, enter delay 5,000, enter delay 5,000, enter. I forgot a backslash n. So this is what happens when you forget a backslash n. That, that's a, a carriage return, and now I've got enter delay, which is not a command. So where did I mess that up? It must have been on the third one. So delay 5,000, backslash n, enter, backslash n, delay 5,000, backslash n, enter, backslash n, delay 5,000, backslash n, enter, backslash n. There it is. OK. So now when I do that, huzzah, everything looks right. OK, so this is exciting. I'm going to take all of this, and I'm going to pipe it into a file. We're going to call it brute5.txt because uh, we're on the fifth iteration here. And let me be sure to actually change this from 0000 to 9999. And we'll send that to a file called brute5.txt. Now I also want to put at the very top of the file delay um, 1000 or maybe, maybe 5000. Yeah, I'll put like a delay 5000 in there just to be sure at the very top of the file. So in order to do that, just type in delay 5000, or I could just do this with nano or vi or emacs or whatever. But I'm going to pipe that into the file, root 5txt and then after that, with a semicolon, it's going to start doing the rest of this. And when it gets to the end, it's two wakas, so it'll append that to the file that we just created with that first echo statement. And that just takes a moment to generate. Now, of course, there's probably a way to do this all in Embrace Expansion or with regular expressions, maybe? No, probably not. But there's probably a ton of other ways to do this. So if you know of some really cool bashy ways to do it, hit us up in the comments or email us and tell me why my piping to pipe to pipe to pipe to pipe is full fail. Either way, I just created a huge file that does 0 through 999, and that's what's important to me. In fact, if I do, uh, if I do a more on that file. This time of year, between the holidays, bad weather, sick days, everyone is spending time away from the office, but taking time as an IT person is really challenging. Now, users always need support. Networks and systems always need to be managed. And that's why I'm recommending GoToAssist from Citrix. It has three essential support tools in one easy to use integrated cloud-based platform. There's GoToAssist Remote Support, which lets you provide unattended support to any PC or Mac or mobile device from anywhere, even an iPad or an Android device from their free app. And so you can take some time away from the office too. Plus, GoToAssist Monitoring lets you proactively identify issues before they become a big problem. And you can keep track of all of this from GoToAssist Service Desk. It's a sysadmin's dream. I know when I was a sysadmin in DC, I was using GoToAssist products and it really saved the day on numerous occasions. So get this, sign up for your special 30-day free trial today. Visit GoToAssist.com, click on the Try It Free button, and use the promo code HAK5.